Hey, Patrick, uh, can you just talk to me about what it was like at Pittsburgh in, in 2019 to have you on the edge and uh, Jalen Twyman on the inside and then what it's like to be back with him now? Uh, yeah, it was just it was just amazing just having a part. It was like having a partner in crime. We were out there just doing our thing, going back there every day and just getting after the quarterbacks. And it was just it was just amazing. And we were just talking about that today when we were warming up. Like it's crazy that we actually got drafted together. So that's so that's crazy. Hey Patrick, I read during the 2020 season that they that Pitt they used you exclusively as a pass rusher. So 99% of snaps on pass plays over the last two years, rather, you were going after the quarterback. You only had five total plays in coverage. What? Obviously, they like you going after the quarterback and and, and rushing the passer. What defines your skill set and why you're so effective at doing that? Uh. Yeah, I feel like Pitt used me as a pass rusher. That's definitely one of my strengths. But I feel like I could do I could do anything that the coach needs me to do. If I need to drop in the coverage, I could drop in the coverage. If I play a linebacker, I played a linebacker. I blitz. I feel like I could do I feel like I could do all that. But I feel like they use me as as, uh, as a pass rusher just because of my ability to get to the quarterback and to make big time plays happen. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, yeah, hey, Patrick. Uh, how you doing? Welcome to Minnesota. Just wanted to ask you about the competition at the uh, right defensive end spot. I mean, after they took you in the third round, they got Robinson out of Florida State. I mean, there's just seems to be so many guys who are going to be battling for that job. Oh, uh, yeah, the competition is great. I mean, I just, I just came here to compete and just play ball, do whatever the coach needs me to do do whatever I could do to help the team win. Andrew? Hey, Patrick, going back to that pit pass rush, you guys were consistently atop the country, I think averaging like four sacks a game over two years. What about that group worked so well together, uh, especially now that the Vikings got two of you guys? Uh, it was just, we just bought into the coaching. Really, it was the coaching that uh, we had, the scheme we had. We just bought into it. And we just try to learn and get better every day. That's all it was for real, just pushing each other to be better. And collectively, did that kind of help you guys decide to go back to school? Because, I mean, you could have come out in the 2020 draft even. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely did because I felt like I had so much more I could get better and work on. Uh, so I came back and tried to improve on that. Patrick, what kind of influence did your coach Charlie Partridge have in your in your development over the the four years you were there? Uh, I'll say the biggest influence he had over me was that you can't just be an athlete; you got to be a student of the game too, and you have to uh, you have to really study the game and be a professional uh, when you're approaching it. So now, like when I'm at this level, being a professional, I've been doing it at Pitt, so it's not going to be like a culture shock to me. It's just something that he he's been installing on us, so now I feel like I'm well prepared. Patrick, how did you find your identity as a pass rusher? What's what's your signature move? What what's your go to? Uh, so I just I actually I actually got a couple moves. I got an inside swim move. I set up the field and hit an inside swim move. That's something that works really good for me. I got a really strong bull rush, and I got a, a cross top and a ghost move. Uh, I just I just watch a lot of film. Like Coach Parcher just had me watch a lot of film, and I'll go out there and just try those different moves. And then I would, I would literally probably try like a different move every week of the season. And then I'll just find whichever moves work best for me, and those are the moves I would just go with. Uh, you lined up across uh, Christian Dersaw directly when you played against uh, Virginia Tech. What was it like going up against him? What were the challenges uh, for you in playing against him? Oh, uh, yeah, he was a good player. Uh, yeah, we were definitely battling and going back and forth at it. Uh, it was it was a good matchup. I mean, when you when you out there with a uh, with a good player too, you have to uh, compete on another level. And and when it's like when it's like that, iron sharp is iron. So you feel like you got better from the game. You learn some stuff, and then you could just it just makes you better when you're going against a great player like that. Hi. Hey Patrick, uh, congrats and welcome. Just uh, wanted to follow up a little bit on how you watched film. Was it a, a a few particular pass rushers and kind of how much how much time did you invest in that on a say like a weekly basis? Uh, yeah, uh, shoot, I watched a, I watched a lot of film. 
I watch so I watch I watch of course I watch Aaron Donald because he was a pit even though he plays D tackle, but he lines over the edge sometimes. I watch Khalil Mack. I watch T J Watt. Uh, I watch Yannick. Uh, who else I watch? I even I watch Daniel Hunter when uh, he started making noise. He really caught my attention on how he was doing it. Uh, and then uh, shoot, I watch I watch so many people. I watch Preston Smith. Uh, uh, shoot, TJ, JJ Watt. I said, yeah, I watched, I watched some people. I probably, I probably watched about, I probably watched two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, an hour at the practice, probably about five hours a day. So I'm watching films. So anywhere from like, probably like 20, 25 hours a week, but just film. I was just studying. Chris? Yeah, hey, uh, Pat, back to uh, battling Christian Derisaw in college. What's he like on the field? Does he talk at all during the games, or is he just a super quiet guy? What's his personality like, and have you gotten to chat with him or know him a little bit since you've been here in Minnesota the last few days? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, he, he's cool. He's a cool dude. He talks a, talks a little. I talk, I talk my trash back. I mean, it it was cool for it. It wasn't too much like too much talking back then. Uh, 2019, we were just going head to head. We were just battling. Uh, but no, nah, he he a cool dude. I talked to him a couple of times, but we haven't really had a chance to sit down. With nothing. We just been locked in on learning the plays and, and handling what we got handled. All right. Uh, you mentioned uh, you know the the list of pass rushing moves that you have. You mentioned the cross chop, which is something uh, that Unique Ngakwe has, Daniel Hunter has. Is that something? where you see a pass rush move that you think you can pull off on the film when you're watching, you know, these guys 20, 25 hours a week, and then you go to your, um, you know, defensive line coach to work out how that works, or is it the other way around? Would they come up with a move that, that they think will work for you, and then you go find pass rushers that can do that? Uh, so you would, so the first thing you, I would do was I would look at the tackles I'm playing that week. I would look at how they set, how they punch with their hands, with their high punches and low punches. So like a, a move like a cross shot works good for people who are low punchers. So if I see someone with a low puncher hand, then I'm a, uh, then I'm a, I'm gonna look at the cross shot. I'm gonna start studying people how they do the cross shot. Like for example, T.J. Watt, he does the cross shot off two steps, where certain people do it off of three steps. Like it's just different stuff like that that I do throughout the week. Sam, Patrick, how did your years in Japan? shape you as a as a player and as a person uh yeah my years in japan they definitely shaped me a lot because i moved around so much i think i moved probably like nine times before i was the age of like 14. so just just moving around that much it just made me like i feel like it made me very cultured it made me very uh well-rounded just having to adjust to like so many different situations and it just made me appreciate like where I'm at at the moment, because when like when you would move back when I moved back then, like for example, one time I moved from Japan all the way to North Carolina, and that's like you never really seeing those people again, and it's just like you just gonna appreciate the the people you around when you around them. 